Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a brand I had not, not heard of before uh, but it came across in my Amazon feed and it looks like an RGB cloud. So the brand is uh, Kachibo or Chibo, it's K-C-H-I-B-O so I'm not sure if the K or the C is silent or if it's Kachibo or Chibo. But this is the NJ63 Pro. So it is listed as a 60%, but by the pictures it appeared to be a 65%, and it is a bare bone. Now they did have a white version of this, and a blue that was very like celestial or uh, baby powder blue, like a very, um, a light blue. So this is the white one, and let's go ahead and open her up and see what she's got. This aside for a second, let's see what we've got inside of the box. We've got a, a decent, um, it's a nylon braided USB A to USB C cable, and we've got a switch puller, I mean a keycap puller, but there does not appear nope, no switch puller. So, all right, so those lights are definitely affecting uh, the focus on this camera. That's why eventually I do, I will go to a DSLR so that I can actually manually adjust um, the zoom and uh, the focus. But anyway, so we've got a 63 key, 60% 60 keyboard. It has this uh, bulky bevel, so it's an interesting looking case with the underglow. Um, I believe this is either a three or 4,000 milliamp hour battery. I'll figure it out but this keyboard um, you see when I purchased it this keyboard it's listed right now at $52.99 but it had a I want to say it was a 20% off coupon that I used so I got it cheaper now they do I, I did um, they have the blue ones and they actually have a white one with what appears to be switches and keys for $73.99. But again, like I said, I haven't seen this brand before, so I wanted to go ahead and give it a try because this definitely does not look like one of the common 60% uh, we see. Now, it, it is a tray mount, and there does seem to be four, eight, ten screws that are holding it in from below. Um, but it does. There's the layer that it has below the PCB. So it doesn't really have too much of a hall in the sound. So I'm, I'm interested to see what this is going to sound like once we put some switches on it. So off the bat, I mean, it's an interesting little kit. Um, I know some people will say, well, it's north facing, but we do have pre and five pin hot swap compatibility, and we have three mode. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the Kachibo NJ63 Pro. It is a 63 key, 60% 60 three mode wireless keyboard that does include Bluetooth 5.0. It includes underglow RGB and weighs in it right at 500 grams. It does not specify the size of the battery, but a healthy estimate it's that it's between three and four thousand milliamp hours. It is a hot switch, a hot swap kit uh, that comes bare bone with three and five pin hot swap compatibility and north facing LED. The keyboard MSRP is for $52.99, but I purchased it on sale. The chin of this keyboard sits at 24 millimeters above the surface, while the back sits at 30 millimeters with a four degree typing angle at the default configuration. If you use the single pair of included feet, it will raise the back of the keyboard to 38 millimeters above the surface and a nine degree typing angle. Taking a look at the stabs, uh, they are lubricated. There's quite a good amount of lubrication and they're fairly firm. 
They might have a bit of a wiggle, but not really much. They're, they're about on par with what you'd expect for something at this price point. These are, well, that one's pretty loose. Yeah, that one. That one. Oh, that's a little better. That one's a little loose as well. All right, so the left shift is a little loose, but other than that, we've got decent stabilizers. We've got some foam padding um, right here to help dampen uh, the sound of the uh, space bar, uh, since it's the biggest key on the keyboard. But otherwise, we have uh, your stand, well, not your standard, but a 60% layout with two extra keys and downward RGB. So, um, I said it gave me the impression, I don't know from the pictures, that it was fully like milky transparent, kind of like how the Fecker is, but it's not. It's a solid white, which I actually prefer. And then it has kind of a bluish um, sky blue tint. Uh, actually, this is the color of the blue. It's similar to this, so maybe it has like a white kind of milky uh, um, bottom part. All right, well, so. I mean, it's a decent kit. I like the fact that it comes well padded. They could have done a better job on the stabilizers, but maybe they just picked these because they're white and they match, although they're these more like uh, the clear material, um, like the stems. All right, so um, I wanted to give this board a real chance, and uh, unfortunately, all of my loot switches are currently in keyboards that I'd rather not take down. Um, I do have these, these are the uh, original NK cream. That's a smaller kale badge. So these are the V1s that I got them a while ago. But these I have looped, and I've also um, run them through my um, switch break in machine uh, for 480,000 cycles approximately. So right under half a million. So I figured um, because they do have the window, they'll allow some of the LED through. I have clear switches, but they're not lubed, so it'd be springy. So I went ahead and decided to just go with these NK Cream. So let me go ahead and load it up, and then we'll figure out some keycaps. Go for it, and we'll do a sound test. Oh, but I did one thing I found I wanted to bring up. So yeah, it does have Bluetooth 5.0. Um, it doesn't say either in the uh, Amazon listing or uh, anywhere in the manual. Um, the size of the battery so my guesstimate is anywhere between three and four thousand milliamp hour battery based on the size of it uh, it looks similar to the one of the two batteries that are in the fecker 75 now i have not seen this particular design in ever i mean i, I so i don't know it could be using a, a known pcb and it's a different case or it's just a keyboard that has been in the international market and just got to us um, or it's a new keyboard I don't know I really couldn't find much about it online anybody else has this keyboard under a different name or, or has it as well I'd love to learn more about it and see. all right so I'm gonna go ahead and load it up with these like I said lube then broken in for about half a million cycles or so uh, NK cream version one so the, the original version and then we'll uh, pick a keycap set All right, we got the switches loaded up. Um, I don't think uh, the sound test is gonna disappoint. Now, just to figure out which keys to use, after some digging, I think I finally picked a key cap so that I actually ended up organizing and looking for other key cap sets, but uh, this is one that I recently received from Idobao um, when they had a sale, I forget. I don't know if it was Black Friday or Cyber Monday, but I picked up, I'm going to say, five keycap sets for right around $80 ship. Um, and now they're all die sub. I usually like to do double shot, but idle bows are uh, decently thick uh, keycap. So yeah, I decided to go ahead and put this uh, XDA profile 9009 right it's the 9000 it's a 9009 xda profile and it does thankfully have a single u shift oh now wait 
need a smaller shift. I was thinking of the wrong one, but oh, okay, now it does have. It's going to be this one. It has smaller size shifts, so yeah, because that one is the. Uh, Oh, this one actually does have arrows. Oh, okay, so so we got the arrow keys, which are gonna go here. Make sure that's the right sized one. So we can go to the one slightly above. Yeah, and I think it's gonna sound good. Like I said, these are uh, some decently thick caps. I like, I mean, yeah, I can't think of a Idobao set that I have that I don't like. So let me go ahead and load up these Idobao keys here real quick, and then uh, I'll go ahead and get to my clothes and we'll do the sound test. So here we are, the NJ63 Pro, loaded up with some XDA keycaps, a 9009 Idabao. Now, this is the first time I've ever said, I think I'll do two sound tests. I always aim to do stock sound tests at keyboards, um, primarily because when I first started watching YouTube videos, I, you know, sometimes I'd see the intro and the intro would be the end result, you know, and then they pull out the keyboard and start talking about it. And I just kind of got the impression that's, you know, what they sounded like stock. No, there's a lot of work that goes into them. And I'd rather hear, even if, you know, it's not perfect, what it sounds like. But the keys on this keyboard... This case sounds much better than it really has any right to. The problem becomes when you start coming to the stabs. They're squishy from being overlooped, and um, they probably could use a little tuning, and, as well as a, a pad below them on the PCB. Uh, and if the tolerances aren't good enough, I would say uh, the plumber spot. So what I think I'm going to do is do a stock sound test the way that it is right now, and then do a stock sound test with tuned stabilizers. Uh, it'll take me a little bit longer, but I think it'll do justice for this keyboard because, I mean, I think it sounds extremely well for a stock keyboard wireless at this price of 60%. You know, I got I am kind of um, a sucker for the the uh, I mean it's kind of one of the reasons I, I'm a big retro fan, but the the big fat bezel I like um, I'm not usually a fan of 60% because I have to hold down a key and do arrows, but this has the arrows for me. Now, I didn't see anything about this, though, um, about any software, so it looks like all the configuration is done through the, um, through the interface, which, I mean, I also looked on the listing and I didn't find anything, though I did not look under K63, so I'm going to take, take a closer look and see if perhaps I can um, find... Uh, find a driver for this if one exists but right now as it is let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it looks like with the lights on so there's not much I mean it's nice and tight up here so we can't really get much of the RGB that's coming through but the RGB that's below now let's see what the site is and go through solid colors for the bottom and then that's the color. So, um, so slow it down. All right. And then for the top, just change colors. So 
wash out. These are pretty tight on here, so there's not much light that's coming through. But if you like your RGB, you still got it at the bottom. Though again, to be honest, I wasn't expecting much from this keyboard, but it has surprised me. It actually does sound really well. I the only thing that I would say to the manufacturer is do a little better a little bit better with the stabilizers, perhaps. Get better, better stabilizers, lube them properly. Um, I bet I'm gonna have to clip the feet. They look like the, I mean, they look like stabilizers that came stock three years ago. So, anyway, um, yeah, so because I, I want to give this keyboard a fair shot, because I, I like I said, personally, I'm loving it. I mean, don't get me wrong, the NK Creams, are, they're decent switches. I know, I mean, they're, in my opinion, they're not S tier. I, I do believe they become much better uh, once uh, broken in. Uh, the scratchiness definitely goes away. They become smoother, and they do get a little bit deeper. Um, but I prefer them, actually, for Franken switch parts. But that's just me. Uh, I've pretty much become gang tactile, or tactile gang. Uh, for the most part. I, I could still use a heavy linear, but uh, give me a tactile any day of the week. Um, I actually wanted to try some uh, U4Ts on here, but I've, I've got them loaded up, and I just, <laughs> I wish I could put them on a lot of my keyboards, to be quite honest, because uh, the U4T and the TX from Gazoo, I'm enjoying them a lot. Uh, the, UT, or the U4TX, the new one, the half silent or half muted, um, the sound that it gives and the feel that it gives is, it's similar to Topper, Topper, I can never pronounce that properly, Topper. Um, it's not the same, but it's similar. It reminded me of the few times that I actually have used a Topper keyboard. I was like, oh, wow. They have a nice deep tone to them. You put them in the right board. Oh, yeah, I've got them loaded in my Tiger Light uh, 80 right now, and I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. Anyway, so this is, again, uh, Kachibo, K-A-C-H-I-B-O. Um, it, it is, they list it as NJ63 Pro, but in the instructions it also says the K63. I'm going to look to see if I can find the software or anything else about it. Uh, again, I think I'm going to go ahead. I may not do the, the stabilizers, but I guess we'll see. But I'm definitely going to do the stock sound test just wanted to bring this up because I mean uh, yeah it just came across my feed there's another keyboard that I reviewed the Ajaz uh, that was a member that asked about it but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and do a sound a stock sound test of this keyboard and perhaps one afterwards with the stabilizers uh, tuned in until next transmission keep calm and keyboard on <laughs>